Hi guys, how are you? Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of Tasca Conversations, my episode, and I hope you guys have a good time with me. The issue about me really uh, spacing out my music and releasing music supposedly when I feel like, and it's 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 not even about me feeling like oh I'm, I'll 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 make them wait, they can wait for me. No, I guess it comes from partly comes from being very attached to what I do and taking it very seriously. And so because of that, I always want to release music when I feel that I'm ready, that it's ready for them to listen to. I want to give them the best. And I want to do it at the right time. And also if I don't feel like I have nothing to talk about, then I don't see why I should be releasing. So there are different artists. There are people who do music, I guess just, you know, for the fun of it, for the vibe, for the... And then there's artists who want to say something, want to talk about something, want to teach something, want to inspire. And those are not things you create every three months or every six months. They take time. I'm also a perfectionist. <laughs> who listens to my stuff over and over, and then I'm like, no, no, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like how I sound here. So I guess all that comes into play, um, but I think I've been both lucky and blessed because I have fans who just wait. They wait, they wait, and when I come back, they're right there waiting. And that's something I don't take for granted. It's a gift, it's a blessing I don't take for granted. Yeah, so there is um, music coming. It actually should have come out last year. And again, it's been delayed because I'm a perfectionist, you know. Um, some of the work we've done, we decided to redo. Some of them we decided to remove and put different um, music, change stuff, work with different people. So it delayed a bit, and um, for that I apologize. But hopefully soon, in the next maybe couple of months, I should be releasing new music, a new EP.
Thank you. Thank you so much. My love life is, um, has had its challenges, just like any woman, you know. All the girls out there in your 20s, you're going to mess up. You're going to make the wrong choice. You're going to choose the wrong person. It's a part of growing up. So it's stuff I don't regret. The most important thing is when you make mistakes, you must learn from them. For example, when I had my son, it was such a happy moment, you know, the happiest moment of my life. And then I go to social media and found stories about who people thought was the father of my son. I don't know where it came from. Someone sent me a text and said, oh my God, did you see this? And the person was the first son. I can't even explain how I felt. I found it even disrespectful, you know, for both me and the first son. I had never met him physically in my entire life. I only met him just recently here when we were doing a job in Soroti. That's when I met him. So I found it wild. But because again, like I told you earlier, I know how the media works, how social media works. People run with what can bring the likes and the shares and the attention. And I feel like it's become a trend now. People make up stuff just to, you know, to trend. What they don't realize is that sometimes these things affect people, you know, in their personal lives, in their private lives. I have a family, you know. My son has a wonderful father. And he reads that stuff, you know. And so in that area, I found that that was quite disrespectful. But I choose to ignore it because at the end of the day, life is life. You can't control people. You can control people's actions. And if the people in your life, if, if the people close to you, the people who love you, know who you are, trust you, love you, what more do you want? There's nothing to prove. I'm in a very happy place right now. And I don't feel like sharing it publicly, but they've refused to understand that, <laughs> you know? Timo, 
My relationship with the media has been interesting over the years. And um, I mean, there's many things I've learned, you know, lessons from the journey. But one of the main things I'd like to point out that stands out for me is that after some time, I had to learn, I had to learn to deal with them because I realized that, first of all, it's not personal. I used to think it was personal in the beginning until I realized that, okay, I guess this is a business for someone and, and this doesn't make it right, but it's a business. I always felt like the moment you respond, you give it credibility, which it doesn't deserve. And I guess naturally, also because I'm a very peaceful person. I love my peace. I love my space. I, like, I don't like to stress myself with stuff. And usually I deal with them the same way I deal with issues in my personal life. I just walk away. If something is toxic, I walk away and look the other way. There's so many things they've said, you know, from calling me beautiful but unlucky. When I look at those stories, they seem to have interest in my love life a lot. I don't know why, you know? Um, I know that, you know, in my, in my 20s, in the early 30s to mid 30s, I was, I was very open. You know, if I was in a relationship, they would know about it. Da, 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 da. But as I grew older, I became more reserved. And then I also learned from their experience, that life was so much sweeter when you keep it private. Mm -hmm. And then I switched. But I feel like when I switched, it's like I sent them on a hunt. <laughs> so now because they don't have the facts, they make up stuff. So it's, it's, it's like a dance with the media. And it's really up to you to just choose to pick out the good things, you know, and live the toxic stuff that's not going to add anything to you. Your 
favorite color is red and mine is blue. There's roses are red and violets are blue. The loss of my son changed my life forever. It happened so fast. It happened so fast. I literally thought I was in a bad dream and that I would wake up. The thing that people don't understand about, you know, things that are so traumatic is that 
when you're going through that moment in that time, it's like you're a zombie. If I tell you that within those two weeks, you know, from the time he passed to the time we put him to rest, my memory is hazy. I was like a mad woman. I don't know what I did at what point. It was, you become numb. But it takes time. You learn to be strong. You learn to deal with grief with every day that passes by. Every day is different. Um, what's interesting, people kept saying, God will give you another one. God will give you another one. What people don't understand is that a child is not replaced. A child is not replaced. God will give you another child, definitely. That will be another wonderful gift but he's not supposed to be a replacement of the other one. They're all your children. They're both my children. But I'm thankful, you know, to my family, my friends. I, 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 I got closer to God. Um, and that really kept me strong. It gets easier when you choose to remember the, the light moments you had, you know, with your loved one. And for me, I made a decision to just take my time, you know, do, do what I feel is right for me to do in that moment. There are things I've never done since he passed. There's a particular restaurant we used to go with him. Mazima dalan chimani timu kamu mani, pentu nola jewanzi cha, abala la jewabale ka, onwani ra entalo abala benze baleta, kare nebwe ba yemuka, gamu kama woli sitia, sinsonga. What thing I sit in a money? Kuba Mukama Tula Munse, only one money, Sebo. Since Songa, what thing I sit in a sente? Kuba Gue Katonda Gwen Sinza and Sieno.
Therapy is important. And these are things I always ignored. But for the first years, I used to deal with it alone, you know, with my family and prayer and stuff. But over time, I realized that therapy is important, you know. So I've had a few sessions. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you always have that lingering thing. Of course, you ignore it. You have to kill it. Should never be there, you know. Every time I've seen a parent lose a child, I know exactly. I know exactly what they're going through. But like I said, I allowed myself to take it one day at a time, you know, and and be kind to myself, because I think at some point I was even very hard on myself. You know, like trying to put on a strong, you know, look. You know, when people see me, they shouldn't see me crying. They should see me. Until I said, why are you doing this to yourself? You're human. You know, if you want to break down, break down. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to stay in bed the whole day, stay in bed, you know. But I have to say that... Um, <clears throat> Becoming a mother again has been probably the best therapy. The best therapy. From the loss and now being a mother, how that has affected me is many things. But one of the things that comes to mind is how I never want to lose a moment. It's like... It's like, I always feel like God has given me a second chance. And I must enjoy it to, you know, the fullest, you know. I treasure everything from feeding my baby to playing with him to taking him to bed myself. Like I want to do everything. I guess I appreciate motherhood more. Not that I didn't appreciate it back then, but... It just makes you want to savor every moment. I would love to have more kids, if God allows. I've always believed that having children is something you pray about. And, and I trust God. The same way I had touch, because people used to ask me, when will you be a mother again? Are you going to be a mother again? Do you want to have more kids? And I always said, I'll pray about it. And when God chooses, he'll make me a mother again. And he did. And he did at a time when... Only his timing, you know. Being a mother is the best job in the world. There is no better job. The joy you get just watching a child grow and doing little things. Yesterday I went home and I heard him say the word avocado. It was how he said it, you know. Like these moments are priceless. And you can't understand it unless you're a mother. So if he chooses to make me a mother one more time, maybe give me two more, I don't know. I'd be happy.
when you ask me who I'd want to talk to or anyone I'd love to um, give advice, I guess it would be young women. Young women growing up and, you know, finding their purpose coming out of school. <clears throat> life, life can be very challenging. But believing in yourself would really take you far. We live in a patriarchal society and I've got to experience that in what I do. Whatever job you're doing, whether it's music, whether it's acting, be you, do your thing, do the best that you can and you will find your success. Be confident in who you are. Love yourself first. This is the most important thing. Love yourself first before you love anybody else, especially if you're in a relationship. Put yourself first, take care of you, fill your cup. Because if your cup is not filled, then you have nothing to give. Even if you're a mother, don't feel guilty to take time off and take care of you. You know, go for spa treatment, take a short vacation. Don't feel guilty because if you don't fill your cup, you'll have nothing to give your children. You'll have nothing to give your husband. So love yourself, take care of you. You're special. Don't let society tell you that you come second because you're a woman. Take the, the opportunities that come to you, grab them by the horn and exploit them.
tonight. Give it up for my band. And I want to take this moment to thank the sponsor, Taskamol. Thank you so much for giving us this platform and allowing us to express ourselves. Last but not least, thank you so much, the audience. Thank you so much for coming out. I had a good time with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.